Hello, thanks for tuning in today. And today we're gonna to be shooting a photograph here. It's not in my studio, it's just in uh, my living room. And we're gonna be examining how to work with white backgrounds. The issue that most uh, new studio photographers and home photographers run into is they'll set up a really nice white background and then they're gonna take a beautiful light, they're gonna stand a subject a good distance, they'll find a, an appropriate exposure for the subject, shoot a photograph, and the white background is not white, it's, it's gray. So what we're going to be exploring is the reason that that fails and the way to overcome it and to achieve a really nice, beautiful white background. So let's get started. So I am joined today uh, in our living room studio, our nice home studio, uh, by Leah. She's going to be our model for today. Thank you very much. Um, I've got a basic uh, portable white background there, and that's going to work just fine for us. But what we're really talking about is making the white background look white. So here's the thing that most photographers do, and they do wrong. I've got a beautiful light source. I've got a great subject. I shoot a photograph at this distance. Now you're looking at that image on the screen right now. And what you're seeing is that the subject is lit perfectly well, but the background is gray. So what is it that photographers do here? And this is the big mistake they make. They take the light and they think, oh, it's too gray. I need to move that light source closer to the background. Well, that also means moving it closer to the subject. So I move that in. I put it right next to the subject. Now, there are reasons why you might want to do that. Uh, a light source really close to a subject has some really interesting characteristics to it that we'll explore uh, in other videos. But what you're noticing in the photograph that you're looking at right now is the background got darker, not brighter. And the reason that it did this is because of something we call the inverse square law. As light travels, the amount of uh, brightness that, on the subject that it hits diminishes. But it happens proportionate to the distance. And in other words, every time that the distance light travels from a subject, or sorry, from a light source, every time it doubles, you have a quarter of the power. So what this means in the studio is if I have a light source and I put it really near to my subject, it's traveled a very small distance before hitting her. So it's nice and bright there and I've got to set the aperture on my camera. That light might be f16. But every time light doubles, it drops off significantly. So lights travel a very short distance here. It can travels again, doubling and doubling again, this kind of distance. And now proportionately, the light on the subject, f16, the light on the background might be f5.6. Because of that, I'm getting a much darker background than subject. That's why if I take the light source and I move it farther away, what I end up getting is still a gray background, but it's a brighter one because the distance difference between subject and background is not as dramatic. That's the inverse square law in action. So if I move that farther away, the background will get brighter, but will never turn white because the background is farther away from the camera and from the light source than the subject. In order to get a white background, I have to light the background. So I've got a second light source here, and we're going to turn that on, and then we're going to shoot a photograph, and we're going to see a dramatic difference. So when we're working in the studio, if we want to have a gray background, we don't have to light it. If we are working with a black background, we don't have to light it. But if we're working with a white background, as you can see from that photograph, we do have to light it. Now, the standard rule is that the background should be one stop brighter than your subject. And that is the ratio. Actually, it's about one and a half stops is what you're looking at there. Uh, so we light a subject one to one and a half stops or so brighter. Uh, uh, sorry, we light the background one and a half stops brighter than the subject. And I did this in a TTL setting. Uh, I have both these flashes in TTL radio triggering. My primary on my subject is always group A. I set that at neutral. And so all I did was take my background light, turn it on, set it as group B. And group B, I just turned up by one stop. And that's how you do it. We're going to be exploring a lot more studio lighting tips and tricks as we go along this blog. Thank you for joining me. My name is Joe, and I'll see you next time.